There we go. Welcome to the GWA podcast on Girl with Angie. I'm Angie. If you haven't met me before, thank you for being here. If you are here live, go ahead and leave a little hello in the comment section or feel free to ask questions as we go. If you're watching it on the feedback, you guys can always leave comments as well. Let me know that you are watching it on the feedback and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. What we're going to talk about today is food shortages throughout the end of 2021 and maybe what we can expect in 2022. But before we get started on that, I want to give a little apology for my last broadcast. I'm using StreamYard and this has been a really new experience for me and Last time, instead of this cute little girl with Angie banner down here, I had a sample banner and I didn't know how to get it to go away. So it was a little distracting to me and I hope it wasn't too distracting to you, but I think I am figuring this out now. Um, so if you do make a comment, I'll try and pop that up on the screen for everyone to see as well. So if you have seen my channel, you know that I love gardening and homesteading and chickens and indoor gardening, outdoor gardening, you name it. I'm I'm dipping my toe in everything as they say. But I have seen more and more empty shelves at the grocery store and I really thought this was going to kind of go away, you know, over time. Um there has been a little bit of an issue around the world right now, which I'm not going to get too deep into, but because of that it has really created this chain reaction that I don't know if a lot of us really saw coming. I mean, we hear some things about, you know, being prepared and being stocked up on things, especially for the winter. If you're like me, I live out kind of in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of lots of woods, and just leaving in the winter time alone to go to the grocery store really, really stinks. So, you know, there's kind of always that I just want to have enough. So if I want to make dinner tonight and I don't feel like driving out in the snow and I don't have enough products in the pantry to make something, I can, you know, grab a couple cans and mix something together. But it has been a continuous shortage. And a lot of the stores are really doing, you know, a, a limit one per customer or limit two per customer. And why are they doing that? Is it because they don't want you to hog all the product? Well, I've been doing a little bit of a research. I've been watching a lot of other videos and kind of behind the scenes of what's going on. And if you are paying attention to the news at all, you've probably heard about the trucker shortages. Now, this isn't just the truckers going on strike. You have to think about these trucks that also have mechanical issues, just like if your car breaks down. Well, if you take your car to a garage right now and it needs a special part, they might not be able to get that part in and there sits your car for a week or maybe longer trying to get it fixed to get it back on the road. So this is also happening with the truckers. It is taking them off the road because there are not parts to fix the trucks. There's also a backup of all of the ships. We have kind of heard that. That's been a lot over Facebook of all of these ships that are stuck over in harbor and they can't get the products off. And this goes for everything. This is not just food. Um, we have been looking for living room furniture and told that it's going to be a six a month wait to get any furniture in. If you go to GE Appliances and you go on their website and you're just looking for a certain product to see if it's available, some of them they say they don't even know when the production is going to start again. It has a production date of unknown. So this is more than just food, but I'm really going to kind of narrow this conversation down into the food. Because when we go to the grocery store and the shelves are empty, there is a limit on employees that they can't hire. They can't get employees to work. And this is something that is nationwide and, and really depends on where you are. But in my area, every place, fast food, everything, now hiring, now hiring, now hiring, and over the last year, I think a lot of us got used to ordering online and me included. It's so easy just to have stuff delivered to your house. And so a lot of those employees that were filling those jobs in the grocery stores are now working in 
fulfillment centers. They're working for UPS and FedEx and Amazon Prime and driving for those companies. And it really pulled those people to those jobs. So we're seeing a decline in that. Also, the grocery stores may normally only keep a certain limit of something. So if it is pancake mix and it's maybe not that much of a popular name brand, they might only stock the shelves with 30, 40, 50 boxes of that particular pancake mix. Well, if there's a more popular pancake mix, and I'm using this as an example because this is one at my grocery store. Don't know what you guys are doing with all this pancake mix, but it is like in high demand. It's not there. And maybe because it's really easy to, you know, have on your shelf for a while, it will last a long time. You can just add some water and you've got breakfast for your family. But if the store is not stocking that non big name brand pancake mix and all the other ones are being sold out, then people are buying that one and they weren't used to stocking that. They weren't used to having that on the shelf. The other thing that we have seen over the last year, and this was really more last summer than it was this summer, but last summer when you had your schools closed and your restaurants closed, that demand for food, that demand for the farmers and growing crops as well as the dairy farmers and really milking the cows and you know getting the milk out. They weren't, I mean, think about how much milk a school goes through, right? And so they weren't, they weren't getting the demand. So sadly, and I can back this up, you can go to YouTube, you can look up all these videos. There was a lot of either dumping the milk because they couldn't let it go bad and they have to milk the cows to make the cows comfortable. They were also taking all of the farmland and they were turning it in. They were, they were turning the soil and rows and rows and rows of carrots, potatoes, lettuce, you name it. They were just turning it and tilling it back into the soil because the school systems and the grocery stores were not, or the restaurants, sorry, the restaurants were not purchasing as much because they weren't open. And so there was this overflux of product they didn't know what to do with. So then as a farmer, do you look at the next year and say, well, is this going to happen again? Are we opening? Are we closing? How much do I need to produce? And there was also this kind of on the smaller side or the smaller scale of producing because they didn't want to have what happened in 2020 happen in 2021. So now we're going into 2022 and we're coming up to the holiday season where there are already shortages because we're not getting it from the manufacturer, there's no employees to package. There's no, you know, the truckers are down, the ports are blocked, and it's not getting to the grocery store. The grocery store doesn't know if they want to buy too much. Kind of everybody's just kind of, you know, confused, I guess is the best word of, you know, how to stock everything and how to move forward. And now going into Thanksgiving and Christmas, people are buying what they normally would but maybe a little bit more. And our prices are going up, which I have to say, hamburger, I'm not happy <laughs> with the price of hamburger. We are a 90-10 um, a hamburger family, and it is so ridiculously expensive. I mean, it was one thing to have it like a dollar or two more, but it's, it's so insanely crazy. And okay, so I have a comment. I'm going to bring this up. One thing is many, we're getting more unemployment than working at some companies. Yeah. I mean, really there were, there, there is a, a, a big amount of people that were getting a lot of money to stay home. And that, that is a part of it is not going back to work, but then that not going back to work just funnels and funnels and funnels and funnels right down to empty shelves. So in saying all of that and kind of setting all of that up, what are we going to do moving forward? Are you going to pay that ridiculous price per pound for hamburger? Or are you going to just not buy that lettuce? Or, you know, how can we do this? And maybe you don't have this big, huge supply of money that you could just run out and be like, I'm stocking it all up. I'm buying everything. I'm being, I'm going to be the hog, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to grab everything. And I don't think a lot of us are doing that, but if there's 
say there's 20 people that run to the grocery store and they want to get that one product and there were 30 products on the shelf, there's only 10 left. <laughs> so when you go to the grocery store and you're like, there's only 10 sitting here. Well, maybe the store only had 30 and 20 of it's gone already. So I'm going to give you a couple of little things on being prepared and um, how to do it in a simple way of not blowing budgets, not, you know, creating mass panic, right? So one of the things, oops, I'm going to do another one. Weekly, let's take a hamper. Yeah, I know. It's it's crazy. And uh, I've, you know, I've kind of been looking around at how do you buy like a cow <laughs> and just buy a whole cow and have it processed because I don't, I don't even know if the prices on that are more than they are, but they could, they could be, I have no idea. I really need to research that more. So one thing that you can do is if you have certain items that are staple items in your house all the time, um, mustard, ketchup, we'll use those as an example. And you go to Sam's club or Costco and they're like these big, huge, ginormous bottles of, you know, whatever, you can also save your smaller size bottles, just to let you know. You can save your smaller bottles and pour the big bottles into the small bottles. And then as we're going in winter, depending on what your temperature is, you could just like leave them out in the garage and, you know, they'll stay cool if you don't have any more <laughs> refrigerator space for something like that. But if you're going out shopping and you've got those staple items and they're something like, you know, your canned soups or um, like the pancake mix, anything, if you're going to buy one, just buy two. And I'm not, and I'm not saying buy two on everything. Like don't take your entire grocery list or your entire grocery bill and double it. But if there's every time you go grocery shopping, say there's five items and those five items you have planned in your head, I'm instead of buying one of them, I'm going to buy two. Or if I normally buy two, I'm going to buy four. And that will kind of slowly build up your stock. And this is something that I like to do just because of winter. Like I said, I, I, I don't want to go out in the winter as much and I don't want to like run to the grocery store. And it's easier if you're low on bread and you can just grab another loaf of bread. Um, your potatoes, um, we do a lot of sweet potatoes and you can put those in brown paper bags and you can just tuck them in the corner of a pantry or a cupboard and just keep them in the dark and they will actually last a lot longer than you think. And for some reason, if you forget about them and they start to sprout, you can plant them in the spring. You can thank me for that later. So there's a lot of things that you can do with just normal grocery shopping. And if you don't have space, so that's, you know, could be a good quote unquote excuse or example of I don't have space. I don't have big pantry. If you are storing your pots and pans in a cabinet in your kitchen, you can take them out, put them in your stove. No one will know they're there. Hide them in your stove and you just opened up a whole new pantry. Now, this is annoying when you're going to go use your stove because you have to take everything out or the oven. You have to take everything out of the oven you know, set it off to the side, but that knowing that you have food hidden in the corner of this cabinet as a little backup is a really good idea. But I think even beyond just your non-perishable items is your lettuces and your fruits and veggies and like, you know, those big containers of like the spinach now, this is something else that I kind of researched a little bit. And last winter in Texas, I'm sure you saw this too, pictures everywhere. They had a really, really bad snow that these people did not expect. They weren't used to this type of snow. And there is a lot of plastic manufacturing in Texas. So they were shutting down for, you know, a week, two weeks. They had power outages, all this stuff. So they started getting behind in plastic manufacturing. What does plastic have to do with your fresh foods? How do you buy those tubs of spinach and arugula and mixed greens? They're in those big plastic containers. So as you know, if you have seen my channel and if you haven't, check out my videos. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Yay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so those products are 
going to be less available. They're going to sell out faster when you get them at the store and you bring them home. They go bad in your refrigerator so fast. And that is what really pushed me into doing hydroponics. And that's what I wanted to start doing in the house is hydroponics. Elliot, family of seven is in the house. Hello, A-Train. Thanks for joining me. I'm so excited you're here. So growing things inside of your house and kind of not relying on the grocery store, you can also look at it as you're kind of helping your neighbor. Because if you're not running to the grocery store to get that big tub of spinach because you just walked over to your wall and you cut it off, that box of spinach is going to be there for your neighbor. So even though some people feel like when you're going to the grocery store and you're grabbing all this food and you're, oh my gosh, you know, this panic and I have to store it all. But if you've already done some of that and then something does happen, weather permitting, whatever it might be, you can't get to the store and things are going crazy, you're not going to the store and your neighbor is. And there is something for your neighbor because you already have it and you don't have to worry about it. So one of the things with growing inside is, yes, you have to have space for some of the hydroponics. If you don't have space, there are so many other ways to do it. There are, like I always talk about with mine is the pre-setup kits. You can do five gallon buckets and you can put, you know, your greens and whatever inside, whatever you want to grow, your spinaches, your kales, jalapeno peppers. I grow those too. There's all kinds of different ways that you can do it inside. If weather is permitting and you want to do something outside and you say, I don't have the space for this. You know, Angie, you live on 20 acres. You've got all this space. Okay, well, you can use a deck and you can do use a patio and you can use a living room window to grow things in. So here's a couple of little things. And I know it's winter time, so this is kind of irrelevant for right now, but you just kind of put that in your memory bank. You can use potted plants for potatoes. And this is an awesome, awesome, awesome thing. You can get like these huge potatoes pots from the dollar store. I mean, they might be five bucks, not a dollar, but they're the really big ones. You can take those potatoes I told you to store away for the winter that you forgot about that have now like started to sprout, stick them in that with some dirt, just a little bit. And then as the potato grows, add more dirt, add more dirt, add more dirt, add more dirt. And the potato then is growing up through this pot. And then at the end of the growing season, you flip the pot upside down and potatoes fall out. You don't even have to dig them up. I mean, this is like a genius way to like not even do them out, you know, in the garden where you're digging. The other thing is tomatoes in a hanging basket. I love this idea. And it does take two people if you want to make it easy on yourself. You can go get the white hanging baskets with the little white plastic hooks. And you can also go to greenhouses and sometimes they make the hanging baskets and they have too many and they will sell them to you cheap at the end of the season. And you can take them and cut out that little circle on the bottom. It's the, like the little drain circle. Cut that out. Take your um, cherry tomatoes are usually the best. Roma are good. The big boy tomatoes get a little heavy. So you kind of want a smaller tomato. Take one plant and stick it up into the bottom of that hanging basket. So while someone is holding it, the other person can be throwing dirt in. That's where the extra hands come in. And then stick another one at the top. And you have a hanging basket that now has two tomato plants. And we have we did this this last year. Okay, I want to pull up another one. I got creative maze, put bedding in a Walmart. It's good, close to use. Shelving in a room, not. Yeah, see, canning and dehydration, that's another thing. Dehydration is one of my absolute, absolute favorite things. And I'm going to do a lot more videos on that um, over the winter. I love dehydrating apple chips. It's such an awesome, awesome, like, snack. And they're so good. The little greenhouses, you know... And this is going to get me a little off track, but I will do this for you. Those greenhouses, you can get those little greenhouses from, um, I think I got mine from Walmart and I did this years ago before I even had a YouTube channel. I bought one of those little greenhouses and I set it up in my basement and I put it, um, <laughs> I put it in my basement. It sounds so funny now, but I set up this huge <laughs> greenhouse and I mean, I could walk into it. I think it has, I still have it somewhere. I should do it again. That'd be funny. I have three or four shelves, I think, on each side. And it's one of the big zip up ones. And I had it delivered to my house. I ordered it and delivered it. 
I set it up and I used um, one of my grow lights because one of my grow lights that I use and move around a lot I've had for years and I attached that to the top and I actually used it to start all of my seedlings inside so then I could get through the frost season and move everything outside and it was really, really fun. And a little trick on how to get humidity in those, and this is silly. This is just how my brain works. I bought a double, um, what do they call those? Those little, uh, it looks like a little stove. I'm not going to think of the word because I'm, this is just so off the cuff. Um, the little hot plates, it's almost like a double hot plate. And I put a old pan on top of it and filled it with water. And I just turned it on and let it steam. That's how I got steam in my greenhouse. And I'll tell you what, in the middle of the winter, I used to go in there and it was long because I'm only 5'3". So I could lay down inside of it and I could just smell my greens and get some steam and <laughs> it was very good. But yeah, I would love to do a greenhouse outside at some point too. But there are so many things that you can do even, you know, outside on your deck, out on a patio, even if you, you know, live in an apartment, you can take green beans, sugar snap peas, put them in small little pots, let them vine up all overneath or all around your deck of your apartment. And you got, you know, veggies right there. So I think we really need to take our mind and maybe switch it a little bit and think of what can we grow on our own. Yeah, you would like, I know, hi, Mark, <laughs> a green iMac. Well, mine is blue, so you can be jealous all day long of my blue iMac. It's not green. I, I wanted green, but they were out. But anyway, so there's there's a lot of things that you can do on your own to grow inside, either with the hydroponic systems, um, doing it DIY. I'm really hoping to get more videos up all winter long to do that. But I think as we move into more of this, there's not going to be stuff at the grocery store. My gosh, I saw a photo and it was a friend of mine on Facebook. So this was not some just like generated whatever, but there was a turkey that they went to the store to buy and the turkey was $85. $85 for a turkey for Thanksgiving. I mean, this is just nuts. Like, how do you buy one for yourself and then buy one for, you know, the, the food pantry down the street? So I think we really have to warp our mind and go back in time. It, it is, is it such a weird concept that we kind of start taking care of ourselves in that way? There was an old article that... um. <laughs> There was an old article that I saw that has been reposted a lot, and I'll try and find it again and put it on my Instagram because it's just the funniest thing. And this was during the Great Depression. This was a long time ago. And the government was asking people to raise their own chickens. And the whole article is a, a picture of a mom and a little kid in a little chicken hen house, and they're holding a little basket of eggs. And they were basically saying, please go out and get some chickens because each family, if you have two chickens and you get two eggs a day and you have seven days, right? So you're getting 14 eggs, you're getting, you know, a dozen and a half eggs a week for your own family. And they really were encouraging us to do that because then the store demand and the farmer's markets weren't so taxed because you were taking care of yourself. And we have gotten so far from that. It's easy, right? It's easy to drive through McDonald's, Burger King, whichever one. It's easy to drive through. It's easy to run to the grocery store. It's easy to go up to the deli and get a little salad. But really, really, when you start growing your own, it's as easy is walk into my dining room and pluck in some kale. It's as easy as we're having taco night and we went over and snipped off some cilantro. And I can't tell you how many times our cilantro, our oregano, our dill, it rots in the refrigerator because you're putting it in a plastic bag. You're leaving it in the bag that you got from the grocery store. You're trying to put it in the one little tray in the refrigerator that says, you know, keep it cool and crisp, right? <laughs> but it doesn't ever keep it cool and crisp. I take 
um, paper towels and I shove paper towels into the Ziploc baggie with the greens to try and absorb some of the moisture from the refrigerator so it lasts longer. But it will last longer if it's still growing. If you can walk over and just snip some cilantro and throw it in your taco or just throw it in your salsa that you just made, it is the freshest thing that you can do. Now, I say this in almost every single one of my videos and all of my podcasts. I am always 100% honest and truthful with you guys. Growing in inside hydroponically can bring you bugs. And I'm never going to lie about that. So you have to be prepared for aphids, <laughs> which I am still battling. And, you know, it's been a, about a year. But one of the things I've not ever done is totally uh, take everything out. And it's called resting your units or letting them rest. And it's letting them rest for about two weeks where there's nothing growing in them and everything just dies off and you start over. So I'm getting ready to do that. And it's, it's really hard on me because, you know, I got to have, <laughs> I got to have something that I can run over and just grab my fresh stuff. You're right. All natural should be our family goal. Everything tastes way better. It does taste way better. And there's so many things that I don't know if everybody realizes with when you get from the grocery store. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this. I'll give a couple examples and maybe this will be another podcast um, special of, of what happens to your food. So tomatoes actually are picked when they're still pretty green. Um, they're not really red at all. And they spray them with something that actually changes the enzymes and really makes that tomato like ripen like right now. But they want it to ripen in so many days, right? Because they're going to pick it and they're going to put it on the truck. Then they're going to ship it to the grocery store and then it has to sit on the shelf of the grocery store. So they need it to ripen right in that gap. But when you're getting it, it's actually been around for a while. <laughs> Your chicken eggs, they're so white and pristine, aren't they? Like your chicken eggs are the, just the most beautiful white thing. And yes, I'm anti-appliance because they don't do well with my, my greens. Like I want my greens fresh. And so your eggs are actually bleached to make them beautiful and white. And so they spray them and they do all this stuff to clean the eggshells and now, does it really get into the egg? I mean, we're talking chemicals on bananas. You know, your banana peel is thicker than, you know, if it's on something else. There's certain fruits and vegetables that you really don't want the pesticides on. Some, it's not going to leach into so much. The eggs, probably not so much. But still, I mean, it's a process. And if you think about that egg, this is another trick too, if you're, if you're making hard-boiled eggs or you're going to boil eggs. If you throw eggs in boiling water and they float, um, floating means that there are, um, air, not just air pockets, but there is an air pocket in the shell. I've been eating bleached eggs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Look it up. There's a way that they spray them and make them white and it's, it's ridiculous. Um, and by the time you get the egg, that was the other thing. See my brains all over now. When you get the egg, it's kind of old and this is kind of going to the floating thing. The chicken's going to lay the egg. They grab it. You know, it's all mechanical. They grab it. It goes out. It gets washed. They throw this bleach stuff on it. They get everything off of it. They package it. They put it in the containers. They have to ship it. It goes to the store. It has to sit on the shelf. By the time you get it, like, you know, unless the stalker was like on the shelf and you're like, I'll take that carton. <laughs> it's been sitting on the shelf. You take it home and you're not going to eat that full dozen like right away unless you're, you know, family of seven, LA family of seven eating probably a whole two dozen eggs at a time. Um, but you're going to take some time eating those eggs. So they've been around for a while. So when you're hard boiling eggs and they float, that means that that air pocket that was in there for a natural reason of making a little baby chick, it has kind of come out, there's holes in the shell. And once you get it in the boiling water, it's going to suck more air in there. It's going to make it float. So you don't want your eggs to float. That means that they're, I mean, you can still eat them. It just means that they're older. So there is nothing like going out to the 
chicken coop and picking up eggs and all of my spring chickens are laying now. So I'm excited. So we're getting quite a bit. I have, um, eight of the new spring chickens and I had eight chickens that are three years old now. So I'm getting about eight to 10 because my other girls aren't laying so much. So I'm getting around eight to 10 eggs a day, which is pretty awesome. Um, washed eggs don't last as long. They only cut you that washes them. Yes. That is another, that's a really, really good point. Um, I, actually don't wash my eggs. I do refrigerate them right away, but that's just like a weirdness. I mean, there's nothing wrong with leaving them out. You can totally leave them out. They totally did that in the, you know, way back in the pilgrim days they, they did. Um, I just happen to have space. And so I kind of bring them in. I don't wash them. They go right in cartons and they sit in the refrigerator and then you can wash them when you eat them. You can also take your eggs if you want to wash them and you can get a mineral oil, um, I would have to look up the actual name of it, but you can buy a mineral oil. And so after you've washed your egg, you can wipe this mineral oil over and it seals all those, um, the pores that are leaking and making your egg float in water. You can seal those pores and then you can like sit them on a shelf. You don't have to refrigerate them, um, do anything with them and they will last months and months and months and months and months. And I think we have just gotten into such a different society of, you know, buying your groceries, you eat everything at that week or, you know, within two weeks and then you go to the grocery store again. So kind of back onto the topic of what we're going to be seeing, I think it's not going to get any better. It's not going to get any better. For us to catch up to where we were production-wise, the the truckers, the I mean, like I said early on, even with the truckers, if there's a breakdown in their truck and they're trying to get parts, computer chips, oh my gosh, there's I know somebody who actually drives past this entire huge field all the time. He's a trucker, and there's fields, fields of pickup trucks that are ready to go for sale. Like they've been through, I don't know if they're Ford GMC. I'm not going to put that out there, but there's a whole bunch of trucks and they'll have computer chips. So they're just sitting there. They can't even sell them. So there's all these things that are just into this progression of, I can't get furniture for my living room for six months. I can't get appliances. I can't get these things. And now we're going into Christmas people. What are you going to do with your Christmas shopping? You know, maybe we need to be a little bit more creative when it comes to our Christmas shopping, maybe we could all just like make some home homemade something, like get out our crafty pens and pencils and <laughs> make each other some stuff. That would be kind of fun. Um, if you have good crafting ideas, let me know. I like doing that. So taking that back into our own family, walking, oh, I got to say this, walking out to the chicken coop doesn't sound very FDA approved. <laughs> oh, Mark. It's probably not. But I like to walk out to my chicken coop and I like to spend a lot of time with my chickens. And probably what's also not FDA approved is me being out there barefoot. I'll just let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like being out there barefoot. I am going to get a video out hopefully um, this week yet or next week on winterizing your chicken coop for all of you chicken coop people um, trying to protect them in the winter and keeping them safe. But I think there was such a, um, I want to, what's the word I'm looking for? There was such a stigma on preppers. Remember that word? And there was a show, the prepper show, the crazy preppers. And they were crazy preppers. Like we all used to think this was such a horrible thing and they're waiting for zombie apocalypse. Well, maybe that's not such a crazy thing anymore. Like, are we, are we so far away? And I'm not saying like, <clears throat> go to your basement or go to your backyard and build a bunker. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you go to the store and you're buying one ketchup, buy two. You know, you're not, you're not stealing the whole stock for yourself. And I really, really don't like it when people put those posts out there and they say, stop hoarding. Oh, I'm sorry. I bought three ketchups. That's not hoarding. Because when I run out of ketchup, I'm going to walk to my pantry and I'm going to grab another ketchup. I'm not going to the store and buying the ketchup that you now need because I have it in my pantry. But growing your own things and growing that stuff, 
Yeah. See, it used to be called living. Exactly. This is what we used to do. We used to go out and grow things. And I get that there's so many people that don't have, that don't have the space to do these things. And that's why I'm going to continue to try and give you guys really good advice on how to do it with small space, how to grow something, how to put a plant in a pot, how to Um, you know, aloe, my gosh, grow an aloe plant and you got something for burns. I mean, we can go into homesteading stuff all night long about, you know, you burnt your hand on the stove and on the pot and you go and you grab part of your aloe plant. You don't need neosporin. You don't need to run out to the store and buy it. You can use an aloe plant. So there's so many things that we, some prepper channels say they Oh, we leave something for someone else. Yeah. I mean, there's, that's kind of the same thing. It's like, it's okay if you have a little bit, right? And I'm not saying zombie apocalypse. Like, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's going to be the walking dead, but we are seeing things in the grocery store that, hi, mom and dad. Look at the support of my mom and dad. Gotta love them. They're always here, aren't they? Love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, Brittany. Yes. Food is our medicine. Right. And then, I mean, that's another whole thing. That's a whole other subject of food is our medicine. And if you're growing your own and you're grabbing that dill and you're grabbing that cilantro, and you're grabbing that oregano and you're using it and it's fresh, the nutritional value is going to be all way up. Then if you bought it from a farmer who farmed it, and I'm not saying the farmer's market, please support your farmer's market. But if you buy it from a farmer that then ships it and sells it to a grocery store and it's packaged and you got it two to three weeks later, your nutritional value is doing this, right? And I'm growing alfalfa. I'll have to put some pictures of this on Instagram as well. If you're not following me on Instagram, it's grow.with.angie, I believe. And I like to try and post little in-between stuff. And the... Um, alfalfa that we are growing. It's just like, I'm going to have to take it down soon when I do this reset, but it's huge. It's huge. And there are so many medicinal things with alfalfa. And one of them is asthma and breathing and respiratory. And so we both have allergies. You know, you'll hear my voice go up and down and crack a lot. Sometimes it depends on the season. That's what you get when you live in the middle of oak trees. And we take the alfalfa and my husband more than I do, he loves his green shakes and he'll put it in his green shake. And it's just, you know, part of the green, but it's something that we can just grow in the house. It's really easy. It's really easy. When you say fresh, do you mean frozen? I think you mean frozen. Nope. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Actually, you know, that's another, a whole nother thing. You can make your own frozen meals. Like when you're making your meals, just make more and then like put them in little containers and freeze them. And that's a really great thing to do too. Just join I'm glad. Yes, Brittany, I'm glad you are here too. This is a great conversation, you guys. Um, you know, it's it just kind of really made me think because I kept seeing um, all of these, sorry, I keep seeing all of these posts about the prices. And like I said, the turkey being, you know, 80, 90 bucks for a turkey. And we have a local newscaster that um, he has a really, really great Facebook page. I'll just shout him out. His name is Dave Bondy, B-O-N-D-Y. And he's a local news guy, but people follow him everywhere. And he's very just right in the middle and just tells you the news. No fluff, no opinion, just the news. And he has people that follow him from everywhere. And people have been sending him pictures of empty shelves. And I'm like, are we here again? Like, didn't we just do this? <laughs> didn't we just, is this over yet? <laughs> but then I kind of want to look at it as I thought you were anti appliance. Well, when you need a freezer, but in the wintertime, really, you can just put it out in your garage. There you go, Mark. I still don't need a freezer. I'll put it in my garage in the winter. But I, I think that we can look at the blessing through all of this. And I'm going to try and wrap it up here and soon because I don't want to, you know, go too long and ramble too long on these lives. But I think the blessing in disguise with everything that has happened the last, what are we? We're almost two years, right? 
I mean, we're getting really, really close to two years. And I think the, the good point of all of this was maybe waking up some people who didn't realize that they would ever run out of toilet paper. And I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories. I'm not going to get into politics. I'm not going to get into any of that. I, I won't do that. I will not follow that, that line or I won't cross that line because that's not what's important. What's important is when you go to the grocery store and there's no toilet paper. And is that panic? Is that people buying it because they don't really need it and they're storing it everywhere? Is it because someone said there's no toilet paper? And we all have that little kid inside of us that says, if mama tells me I can't do it, I want to do it. And my mom's in here somewhere and my dad, and they probably know that about me, right? (laughs) You can't have it and you want it. But when I go to the grocery store and it's more than toilet paper, and I'm going to the grocery store and the pancake mix is out and there is no log cabin pancake syrup, not much of Aunt Jemima. I like my log cabin. And it's gone. And I pickle pickles from cucumbers. You know, pickles are cucumbers. And we pickle stuff. And I go to the spice section. And for two years, I can't find pickling spices. It kind of starts making you think, what can we do at home? What can we do Oh, he's got the, oh, look at you, Mark. Four months and two weeks until year three. Until year three. Is it really? Okay. You know, I can't keep track anymore. It's it's too much. I can't keep track anymore. And I try not to. And I think that some of the peace and the joy that has gotten me personally through this last however long it's been, (laughs) is standing in front of my grow lights and waking up every morning and making my coffee and standing there in front of my grow lights and smelling my greens and having this feeling of accomplishment that I grew that. Aphids and all, bugs and all, I grew it. Yes, this is a problem. So when it gets to a point of where we can't get our food and we can't store our own food, you need to start thinking outside the box. And I think that's one reason that kind of pushes me with the hydroponics and it pushes me to learn more. I had no idea when I bought one that I would buy two and I bought them. And I will say, yes, you guys know if you've seen my channel, I am an affiliate with iHarvest, IG Works. Use my coupon code Grow with Angie and save $50. And I get a little commission. But I bought my unit. I bought my second unit. I bought my Aero Garden. I bought my deep water culture tub. I buy it. And I try it. And I'm going to tell you if it works or not. Corona time will do that to you. I'm not much of a Corona fan, Mark. I think you know that. You know what I like, Miller and vodka, not together. (laughs) We've had those conversations. For some of you who don't know, and this is your first time on the podcast, um, I have a few friends in here that are from Clubhouse. And if you guys don't know what Clubhouse is, Clubhouse is an awesome app that you can get into and you can sit around and you can do um, live talking. It's like sitting on a big conference call with a whole bunch of people and there's a ton of different rooms and you can get into these different rooms and you can talk about different things. And I spend a lot of time with fellow YouTubers and we, we teach each other things. But I did go into a room, which I had not been in in a while, and I really, really need to do this again. Um, I went into a room that was a gardening room, and we were talking about, well, their discussion was about a particular brand, which I'm not going to, I won't say, but they were saying why not to buy this particular brand of a hydroponic system. And the conversation was actually really interesting because 
there's the viewpoint of buying one. They can be really, really expensive to a DIY. And a lot of the people in the group know me. Um, I'm for everything. Buy a kit, spend a lot of money. Do a DIY, spend a lot of money. And I think that's kind of where I kind of came up into the conversation was I, I, I'll do DIY all day long. I mean, even my little deep water culture, which was the video I think two weeks ago that I did, you know, it's a tub. It's one of these little plastic Tupperware containers. And um, you can do DIY if you want to drill your own little holes in it, you know, go out and buy a tub, drill your holes in it. But even with the hydroponics DIY and you're going to do um, all PVC piping, great go out and spend 20 bucks on PVC piping. But what else do you need? You need pumps, you need food, you need pH levelers, you need pH testers, you need grow lights, you need seeds, you need medias, you need net cups. <laughs> and that will be a podcast at some point on its own. <laughs> so I really liked that conversation that we kind of got to um, balance it out. Corona time. Oh, Mark. Keep phenomenon due to what's happening. I dubbed Corona time. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Brendan Sparks is in the house. Here I was going to wrap it up, but you know, now that Brent, look at my clubhouse family. Gosh, you guys, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I just wanted to take today to really encourage people to think outside of the box when it comes to growing your own. Think outside of the box when it comes to prepping and get that whole mindset of, you know, it's a zombie apocalypse and I need to put a bunker in my basement because that's not what you need to do. It doesn't have to be like that. It has to be, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy one jar of pickles. This is what I normally buy. I'm going to buy a jar of pickles, but today I'm going to buy two. And then the next time I go to the grocery store, I'm going to get a couple cans of chicken soup. But today, instead of two cans, I'm going to get four. And it's just a really slow process of having a little bit of back stock. And even if it gets you through winter, as we're going into winter, that's awesome. But then take it a step further and say, how can I grow my own cilantro? My family eats cilantro so much. I'm just saying your family, not my family. My husband does. But if there's something that you are growing or eating a lot of, try and grow it. Did you know that you can grow stuff in mason jars? You can do hydroponics in mason jars. And I'm going um, to do a video on this soon. And I actually had somebody reach out that has an Etsy store and he makes these really cool tops that go on your mason jars and then you can put your little net cup in there. It's great. So I'm going to do a little video on that for him. I, I promised him I would, I'm kind of testing the products right now. I thought that was very sweet. He shipped those to me. And so there's so many little things that you can do in your windowsill. You can do them in front of your slider. If you've got the light coming in the right direction in the summertime, you can do it on your deck. You can do it on your patio. Dang it, you can do it in your driveway. I've seen people who do it in their driveway and it is the straw bales like I straw bale garden. I've got a couple of videos on that too, but I straw bale garden and I have seen people do this in their driveway because you don't need anything. You're growing in the straw bale. You don't need anything underneath. You can do this anywhere. Super hot peppers in mason jars and other small containers. Yeah. Hi, Russ Box. Oh my gosh. You guys are so awesome. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, I really want to kind of do a little bit more of the crack key. I've been the deep water culture or DWC. This is the first that I'm doing, but I do have an air stone in it. And I know there's like this big, huge thing about the crack key and air stone. If, cause a real crack key is no electricity. I think the air stone really helps with, you know, the oxygen, oxygenization, oxygenization. Why can I, you guys know what I'm trying to say, getting the oxygen into the water. <laughs> And trying to get that in and it kind of helps work your food and all that stuff throughout your plant. But I really do like that process. Um, and I am running on a room in my dining room and I gave a shout out in one of my last videos. I don't know if I have it posted yet. I think it's still in editing. But someone had told me on my Facebook group, Girl with Angie on Facebook, someone told me on my Facebook group to stop calling it my dining room. 
and call it my grow room that has a table in it because that's pretty much what it is. I pretty much do not have a dining room anymore. You guys, I don't know what I'm going to do. I want to keep buying stuff and testing it for you all. And it's just been amazing. But I just really felt it in my heart to come on today and talk about what are we going to do with this food crisis, if you want to use the word, because I've never seen it like this. You know, you might go through a storm in the winter and, you know, I, I was really little and they plowed and it was way above my heads and I'm in Michigan, Northern Michigan. And what was that? The storm of 76? I think it was the storm of 76. If my parents are still here, leave a comment. You guys know what year it was. And I was little. And so you go to the grocery store then and it's like, oh my gosh, there's nothing here. And then the snow melts and it's spring and everything's all good back to normal. But I think it's just really beginning. It is going to take a very, very long time for all of this stuff to catch up and for all the employees to go back to work and for people to stop shopping online. Like we shop online like all the time, right? And so some stores don't need to hire as many employees because everybody's ordering online. So you have to find that happy balance of supporting your local businesses, but then doing what you can for your family at home, even if it's something small. Look at that. See, I knew 77, 78. Well, you know, without giving away my age, I was still very little and the snow was still very high. (laughs) So on that happy, funny note, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. You know, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward. I'm not a snow person. And that's why I love my hydroponics and I love growing inside the house because I'm not a snow person and I don't want to go to the store all the time to get groceries. And if I can grow it myself and I can do it inside the house and I can encourage any of you one pot, try it, throw a potato in a pot with a little soil wait for it to grow, add some more soil, add some more, add some more, add some more. And there go your potatoes. Try a little tomato plant, put it in front of the window. Anything. Try an avocado tree, which you're not going to get avocados, but that's always fun for the kids. You can grow an avocado tree. When you cut open your green peppers from the grocery store, save your seeds. Do you do that? I do that. I take the seeds out. I lay in my paper towel. I let them dry. I throw them in a Ziploc baggie, I take a Sharpie, and I say, June 2021, store pepper. And I plant the seeds. I think we just all need to switch our brains a little bit. And if 10% of us that haven't been doing it, do it now, we can help. We can help not be buying everything from the grocery store because we're growing it and our neighbor can buy it if they need to. And when you really get to a point where you are doing a lot and you look over at either your hydroponic system or your whatever it is, if you have enough, you can share it. If my parents come to my house and they want a dozen eggs, they get a dozen eggs. If my husband's coworkers want eggs, they get eggs. And they're not buying store-bought eggs. And it left those eggs for someone else. So I'm going to leave you guys with that today. And this might be a conversation that we have a lot about the shortages. And same seeds and potatoes. Ooh, onions. That's another one. You can take green onions, cut the top off of the green onions when you're using your green onions from the grocery store and stick that little bulb with the root in water and you will grow another little green onion to be able to trim off later and use again. So on that note, think about what you can save, what you can use, what you can grow, and if you're willing to give it a try. And if you are willing to give it a try and you are willing to take this journey, take it with me. Grow with Angie. Don't just watch Angie grow. 
grow with me. We can do this together. We can learn a lot together. If you are watching this on the playback and you are not here live to have fun with all of this amazing chat that is going on, please leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you. If you have any questions, comments, I always answer everything. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That helps me out a lot. And I love all of you for being a part of my community. And I'm going to try and do these every Wednesday night now at six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So I will catch you guys on the next GWA podcast on Grow with Angie. Have a great night.